This is the staff screen in LMN Time. And on this screen, you're going to see a list of all your employees and users of LMN Time. Each row on this screen represents a user and you can click their name to see their details. You can also use the headers of each column to sort by that column. So for instance, if I wanted to see last name from A to Z, I'd click last name or last name from Z to A, I'll click last name again. You can flip that search upside down just by clicking the column once or twice. You can also search for an employee. So if I type in Ennis, it returns two employees, one for Ben Ennis, because that's his last name. Sean Dennison also gets returned because he has Ennis in his last name, E-N-N-I-S. To get rid of your search, just click the red X beside the search filter and it'll disappear. To add new employees, you're going to want to go down to the bottom right and click the face with the plus button beside it. It's the employee button. You're going to enter a first name, a last name, and then you're going to want to create a type. Now, regular employees are simply people in your organization that don't need their own username and login. Typically, or most typically, they're laborers. You need to track their time for time tracking, for payroll, for job costing, but they don't need their own login and password to create their own timesheets. That's done by the supervisor or foreman. So regular employees, you can have as many of them as you want. They're free. And they are simply people who don't have access to create their own timesheets, but people whose hours you need to track. You'd need supervisor foreman if Greg needs access to create timesheets. So the difference between a supervisor foreman and a regular employee is that a supervisor and foreman can log into the system, can create and edit their own timesheets, and can add and edit people to their own crew. Those are the two functions that a foreman can perform. Foremen are $9.99 a month, and you have to set them up with an account with their own email, username, and password. That way they have their own username and password to log in and set up their timesheets. The last setting is administrator. Administrators are those people who have the same access as you probably do right now. If you're looking at the admin screens, if you have the ability to approve timesheets, to create new jobs, to run reports, these are administrator privileges. So foremen by default don't have the permission to create new jobs or to approve timesheets or do any of the tasks on the LMN time admin screen. If you need access to the admin, then you need to be an administrator. And then you can set up jobs or approve timesheets or do those other things. Administrators are included in LMN time. You get five of them included with your account. Extra administrators, if you need them, are $9.99 a month. So flipping back to regular employee now, you'd also want to set up an employee ID, but only if you use employee ID numbers. If you use an ID number in your payroll system or for some other reason, enter them here and it'll make the export a little easier. But if you don't use employee IDs, you can skip this step completely. Payroll warnings is the next option that you can choose. By default, payroll warnings are on. And that's to say, when an employee goes over a certain amount of hours, you're gonna get a warning. What those certain amount of hours are is set up in your settings screen. So here under settings and under time tracking, I have the ability to raise a warning when an employee's daily hours goes over a certain number of hours. In this case, you can see my account set to 12. So I'll get a warning on my payroll warning screen under the timesheet section when an employee's hours goes past 12 hours on a timesheet. If I don't want that warning to come up for this employee, I'll put on the skip warnings. If I want the warning to come up, but I don't want it to be 12, maybe Greg Wilson works a lot of overtime, so I only want a warning when he goes over 15 hours, I can set a specific threshold for Greg. So my company is still set to 12 hours, and that's the default. But I can give Greg his own specific payroll warning by using that number here. If I want Greg to be the company default, I'll just leave it at zero. And if I, of course, I don't want him to have any payroll warnings at all, I'll just turn that on. Subcontractor is useful if you want to track hours for somebody, but you don't want to export their hours for payroll. So if you do have somebody that you pay as a subcontractor, or particularly in snow and ice, where you may want to track your subcontractor's locations on the timesheet for liability purposes, but you don't pay them that way, you can take them off as a subcontractor. Regular employees whose hours that you export for payroll should be left blank as a regular employee. 
And finally, you've got salaried. And the salaried section is used if that employee is paid an annual salary instead of hourly. Make sure you turn that on if the employee is salaried so that it exports the payroll information to QuickBooks properly. Also here at the top, you've got group membership. Now we'll get into groups in another video, but you can create employee groups so you can group your employees by uh, categories. For instance, I've got a group here called construction employees and another group called drivers. So if Greg Wilson here was a member of both construction and drivers, I could tick them on and off here. This is useful for foreman in the field. If I'm a foreman in the field and I wanna make it easier to find staff, here I am looking at a timesheet. Instead of scrolling down and looking at all my staff, I can go here and say, just show me my construction employees. And this list will get shortened to just employees that are construction or just my maintenance employees. And there's my list of just maintenance. Just makes it a little faster for your foreman to find staff that they're looking for. It'll also make it a little easier for you on the employee screen because you can filter your list of employees by the employee group that they're in. When you've got their group set, click OK and you've created your first employee. Now there's other ways, faster ways to set groups up on a bulk level. So if you want to add a bunch of employees to a group at once, click, click, click the employees you want to add. Down to the bottom left here, you're going to click staff groups, and then you can say add to staff group. So I'll click that, select the group I want to add them to. Let's say all these staff are drivers. So I'll click my drivers group and click OK. And now they're in my drivers group. If you want to filter your staff group by drivers, I just go here, select drivers, and there's the list of staff I have set up as drivers. That's pretty much it for staff. If you watch the video on the staff groups, you'll see more about how to use staff groups and how to view your employees by staff group.